Hey everyone, greetings from Painted. It's March 31st. We are in week two and a half, I don't know, 50,000 days into our lockdown. It just feels like it's never ending. So I'm just trying to be here and trying to be here for you. Um, I'm sure we're all a little stir crazy now. So we're gonna go do some fun stuff today. Um, I am working on a rocking chair that I started forever ago, probably before Christmas. And like most studios, when I'm working on stuff for clients and working on stuff for the business, my personal choices of what I'm working on get put away. And that's kind of what I did. <laughs> I put this rocking chair, it's been sitting on my um, uh, Lazy Susan table that I work on for months. And finally I said, that's it. I gotta finish it because I can't stand looking at it anymore. And this is probably gonna go outside so everything I pick is exterior rated. Um, I'm gonna angle this down so you can see the rocking chair here. You can see it's laying down on the table because that'll allow me to work here and let you see what I'm doing. I'm just trying to angle things so that you're actually seeing things. Hi Lisa, nice to see you. Thank you for your kind words on my shirt. I'm gonna go reach back behind me for a second, grab my iPad so I can see what's going on because when now I absolutely can barely see what I, everybody's saying. So time for iPad logins. Give me just a second. Um, and you cannot log in and see a live before it started. So it ta always takes just a second to, to find everything. Let's get to the page. Let's make sure the volume's down so I don't hear myself echo when I go do things. All right, I'm on the page. I'm just waiting for the video to load up. I got the video. There we go. I can see. Now I can see myself, which is kind of important when I want to be able to see your questions. So I'm happy everybody's here. Let's see if I can get the comments showing. Of course, that's always the challenge with this now. Uh, comments on. I want to be able to see comments, so hopefully that'll work. Comments on, comments off. Okay, we got comments on. Sorry, folks. Sometimes this stuff is just strange. I don't know, you know, new things pop up every time they update something. All right, so we're going to take a plate like this with compartments. Um, just so you know what I've done already. This came in. I cleaned the heck out of it. Uh, I sanded it lightly just to get some tooth and I got a, something got stuck on there in the interim. Um, Clean the heck out of it, degreased it, made sure because this was actually sitting outside on sidewalk. I made my son run out and grab it and throw it in my car. Yes, I am one of those people on occasion. Um, then what we did is we after that, it's all cleaned. We used black set coat here and white set coat on here. Basically, all of the horizontals are black, all of the verticals are white. Set coat is exterior rated, so I've already started a plan that's safe to use outside. I want to put this outside my front door and um, maybe even stick flower pots in the seats because I don't have any room for any more furniture in my house. So this is obviously cured a long time. I take a, a, a plate like this so for my stenciling and we're gonna use products like Set Coat, let's see if you can see the color, Set to Coat Gravel Gray, Set Coat White, and Faux Metal Silver. Now I could use Set Coat Silver, but I want Faux Metal because I think it's a little more opaque when I use it. I'm opening up my can and I, putting money on. <laughs> I didn't seal this can very well, and I'm sure this has all happened to you guys. Um, my white dried up hard. I don't mean like, like it's hard. Yeah, I'm a genius, so that's something else to deal with later is to get some more paint. I'll set that one aside. I might even have another white down there, but right now we're going to start with the gray. So, uh, let's pop this open. There's my lid. There's my paint. It needs to be stirred. Literally doing this 
just for the fact that I am here. And if anybody has any questions about my process or what I did or what I didn't do, don't hesitate to ask me. And I'm just taking a little bit of paint because I'm not going to need a lot. I have these big gallon cans and I only need like half a teaspoon of paint. So let me put this on the floor with the lid on it so that I don't knock it over and have gray paint all over the floor. And then um, we're gonna use, let's see, there we go, foam metal silver. Uh, crack that open. This is gonna be kind of dried out too, I know that, but I can make that work. You can see it's gotten separated and you cannot thin foam metal with anything. It doesn't like to be thinned. It wants to be left as it is. And, and this happens, um, this is why I usually don't order more than I need. It just happens that I have like seven jars of foam metal. Don't ask me why, I just do. I don't even know why I have as much as I have. And I'm gonna stir a little bit of this up into the liquid that's already in there. And even when it gets hard and lumpy like this, it's still usable. Don't throw that out. You can use it like um, rub and buff without having to worry about it being waxy. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this and try not to spray it on my clothes. Cause yeah, I, being lazy and I didn't even put on an apron today. All right, so I put a little bit of that on another. And foam metal covers really, really, really well. That's silver on my thumb. So I hope that um, you pay attention to that. I'm gonna wipe my thumb off way far away from me. Maybe grab a paper towel. I don't know about you, but I get anxious using paper towels now because I feel like I'll never have be able to go out and buy another roll without it being drama. And then I'm gonna grab stencil brushes. Now I have a crap ton of stencil brushes and I know there's two brushes and other brushes in there, but some of these brushes are over 20 years old. I bought this uh, one this, uh, this is a low Cornell one. I bought this one in 1999. How do I know? Because it was my very first Idol convention at Valley Forge, Pennsylvania. And it was the very first time I'd ever tried any kind of fancy stenciling. And I took a theorem stenciling class, which is a whole nother video. I think I did a little bit of that, but I'll do it another day. Not today. Um, and I bought these. These are the fir very first stencil brushes I ever bought. And I have worked, and these have been through classes and years in the studio, and I've worked really hard to keep them in good condition, which you can do if you pay attention. Now, for those not familiar, Fair Isle pattern is the sweater pattern that you see on Scandinavian patterns. If you got the notification, it showed up in the notification. If you didn't, I'm going to pull a picture up I, I took on my iPad so that you all can see if I can remember where my pictures are because I can't remember anything. Here we go. These are Fair Isle patterns. They look, you know, they're Scandinavian generally, ski patterns, ski sweater patterns, that sort of thing. So I thought it would be fun to do um, a video. I'm sorry, a, a rocking chair with all these wonderful horizontals to do them in that kind of a pattern. Now I have all sorts of stencils in this one. I just dipped into something, so obviously I'm gonna have to clean that back off before I use that. And when I get messes on surfaces, I don't freak out. Um, I know I have scuffs and, in, and flaws and actually some even paint, uneven paint spots. I'm gonna have to fix that. I know it. Oh well, I'll fix it. So I don't oh I don't have stencil adhesive on all of these, but we're gonna start with one. And I got this pattern. These are adhesives. I got them just from Michaels. So we're gonna start by peeling one of these off. And these are reusable and repositionable. And I'm gonna if I wanted to be really good, I'd measure it. I'm not wanting to be really good. I just wanna see if I can get me in here, approximately in the middle. Let's see, I'm not quite even close. I need to move up 
a little bit. And I'm not doing a very good job with this. How about I do it this way? This is one of my favorite techniques. If I can't easily figure the middle, I just sort of fold things in half and drop it down and it almost always works perfectly. Except I did it crooked. Yeah, it almost always works perfectly until I do it in front of people. I am just not getting this on where I'm happy with it. All right, that'll work. And I think we'll start with a little bit of gray first. So I have this and I'm literally just swirling a little bit of gray on the bristles tips. You can see it's not saturated in deeply. And I'm really gonna be happy with how this works. And if you comment and I don't see it, um, it's because I'm looking down here on my screen and your comment hasn't necessarily popped up yet. Uh, and I'm just gonna take my stencil and I am swirling. You can pounce, but I find that that wastes a lot of product and a lot of time. Um, I need a little more paint. And I'm just working this paint into the bristles of my brush, like this. And then if I have too much or if I stick my thumb like I just did into the silver, because I'm so smart, I grab a piece of paper towel. And you want this almost dry. So I could do this and take off almost all my paint. Um, but I can afford, since this is a an adhesive stencil, as opposed to a regular stencil, I can be a little more generous. And I'm being really careful because I don't want to swirl off the edge here or over here. Um, so I'm just going to do this gently and take my time and then I'll move the stencil to fit the, pat fit the, the back of the rocking chair. And I can lift this and say, you know, I got a great release. And that's actually pretty good. It actually looks darker when I put the stencil down, but you'd be surprised at how much paint you actually get on the surface. And my surface is fairly smooth. You can see the grain in the wood, but the wood itself, Jesus, I'm a genius. I keep getting silver on my fingers and then touching places and I leave a trail. So first there's <laughs> the great American cleanup. Lick your finger. <laughs> no, I'm not worried about it. Getting it in the chair, getting sick. All right. Usually I use cleaning solutions, but that would have meant I had to get up. So I licked my finger. Yes, I promise I will clean this whole chair down before anybody buys it. I hate to think of how many things we all have that somebody else stuck a germy finger into. Uh, okay, so we've got that on there nicely. And you can actually see there's a slight, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but there is a slight change in tone from here to here. Hi, Barb. Hi, Carol, and hi, Cynthia, nice to see you. So there's a slight change actually in color right here because when I put the stencil down, it also picked up, um, it's a little adhesive, it picked up the dust that sat on here. So that's all on me. And so make sure I get any of the little silvers. What I actually did is I got a little silver on my cloth here my paper towel and now it's wiping silver behind me so I've done that now I have options I can go and rematch my stencil right here perfectly and then just run it off the edge or I could take my stencil and just use that center as a place marker and then go this way um, I think for my own sanity I'll probably just do something like this I'm gonna lay it over and I can do this because this paint is so thinly applied, it's virtually dry by the time I'm done with it. And I'm not perfectly lined up here and here. These stencils can stretch a little when you pull on them. So I don't wanna fuss with it too much more. And I'm just taking a little bit of paint on my brush again, 
super dry, stenciling this down. And truly, I could have, you know, worked and carefully see if I could get it to uh, wrap this shape. I don't want to do that. I, I'm not going to make myself that crazy for this. There we go. And here's pulled back, and we have our pattern here. And then I'm going to go back on this side, lay it down, reshifting my registration. And this is nice because I can just lay this right over here and the pattern lines up neatly and nicely. And I just wipe that over. See, I get a little too excited with my own stenciling. If I was really being cautious, I would have run tape all the way along the edges of the stencil. Um, again, this is my project for my house, so I'm being a little lazy on it. I don't know about everybody else, but it's, you know, now that we're in the second week, full week of our, our quarantine here in Chicago, our lockdown in the state, um, the days are kind of a little blurry, which they generally are to me anyway, because I, most of my days are running from the studio to the house and the house to the studio. But this has gotten a little weird. And it's always amazing to me who's listening to the quarantine and who's not. There we go. I mean, I just want everybody to stay the hell away from me. <laughs> I know I shouldn't laugh, but it's kind of true. I just don't want to talk to anybody. So I'm going to use another one of these peel-off stencils, and maybe we'll do this. And we're, I'm going to make each one of these um, areas different because I can. I'm not working on trying to make anything perfect. I'm just playing with patterns. This is what I do with my own stuff. Ow, it's stuck to my finger. Uh, it cries. Sorry. Normally, I, I'm when I do stuff for clients, I'm more careful. I do more precise taping off. I do more thoughtful layout. For myself, I kind of slap things on and just hope for the best. And I'm sure many of us do the same thing. And again, I'm trying hard. I can just put, grab a piece of tape, put a piece of tape on either side of this. I'm not feeling that. I'm not feeling that right now. Um. And part of this is, I'm in a rough position, sitting on a table doing this in an awkward position is not easy. Uh, let's see, what do we got? Yeah, getting down there. And when I get down to these little spots down in here, I have these stencil brushes. Again, these are uh, Lowell Cornell stencil brushes I cut 21 years ago at my very first idol convention in Valley Forge 1999 I didn't know a lot of the people there then I had been working on my own for a long time but I missed apparently I missed events like Lobster, uh, cracked crab legs and hammers going on in tables and there were a lot of jokes and I bought my very first no that was a different convention that was another one in Baltimore I'm thinking Valley Forge I met some really cool people for the very very first time um, some of whom have become really dear friends over the years some of whom are extremely respected colleagues and Sadly, some of whom are no longer with us. But that, that was my very first professional convention. Mind you, I had already been painting professionally for a good, almost 10 years at that point, since this is my 30th year in business. Oh, yeah. Hi, Lori, nice to see you. So I like how this is working. And I don't care if I have flaws and 
screw ups on here. I'll, by the end of the time I'm done, I will have it so that I won't even see any of that. And I'm moving my stencil to lay it over. And these stencils that I'm using, um, I think I bought them on Amazon. <laughs> Um, it's not always easy to find, you know, I'm going to have to start designing some stencils for things that I want because, uh, I spend, I have my, my go-to stencil people like Jennifer Ferguson at Artistic Painting Studio, Melanie Royals, um, Royal Design Studio, um, let's see who else, uh, Olive and Leaf great stencils. I wish they wouldn't make them on acetate, but they do. But the stencil designs themselves are amazing. Um, you know, I find, good grief. Leslie Nesbitt makes gorgeous stencils. I love hers. She's hopefully still working on her furniture design stencils because if she does them, I know I'll be buying them. We'll have them here in the studio. That's for sure. All kinds of stuff. I mean, everybody's work has changed a lot. Um, I know some of my friends are still able to go out on jobs because they're completely isolated. Me, I'm able to come into the studio because I am completely isolated in here. I don't let people in the door. I may I wave at the UPS guy, let make him leave things at the door, wipe them off, unpack them, and then we pack them clean to ship out. So we've got that, and I want a little more right there. I knew there's something that was. So I can go in with these. And before anybody asks, no, I do not carry these brushes. Um, this, I have not found anybody who makes them quite that small that carries them at a reasonable rate that I will be willing to sell them. I carry these wonderful brushes from Artistic Painting Studio. Um, these are probably my favorite production brushes. They hold their shape, they wear, they don't splay out. Smaller jobs, I work with smaller brushes. I have these from little Cornell. This one is, I don't know, this is an old plaid one. And then this is Artistic Painting Studio. So you really have great brushes out there if you look for them. I do carry the Artistic Painting Studio brushes if anybody wanted to know that. If you didn't, oh, I, sorry, I told you anyway. So I'm gonna clean, do this. So I'm gonna do these two and then I'm gonna create, oops, schmeared. Speaking of schmear, I miss New York bagels. I know we're all like at home, everybody's eating like crazy. I'm trying really hard not to um, just do boredom eating. That's, I post a lot of posts about, you know, what I'd look like if I just spent the entire lockdown eating because that's kind of tempting. Actually, I wouldn't mind doing a little more sleeping, but I'm not good at napping. That seems to be a kindergarten skill that I lost somewhere in adulthood. See how cute this is? I mean, really, we're getting a great fair isle pattern here. So I'm gonna stick those two stickers, stencils to the side. And then I have these patterns too. Um, if anybody has any, wants to chat about anything, I mean, this is a very, very casual one today. We're not doing anything heavy duty, nothing you really have to pay a whole lot of attention to. You're not gonna miss a whole lot. I think what we'll do is we'll do this one down here and I'll line it up with, if I can do it right, I can put those. You can't, may not be able to see this, but I've got these little dots here. So I'm almost using them as a spacer. Hang on just a second. I have spray a little adhesive on this and I don't want to do it at the camera. So I sprayed this with a little bit of 3M regular adhesive. I don't use that repositionable stuff and there's a reason. The repositional stuff, both stuff loosens its tack faster and the adhesive is lighter. Okay. 
Thank you, Beatrice. I appreciate the kind words. Okay. So I've got this dry and I'm just waiting till it's tacky enough that it'll stick to the surface, but it's not so tacky that it will leave residue on here. And that's, that's what people, when people say they've got residue from their stencil adhesive, it's not from the stencil adhesive because the stencil adhesive is bad. It's because you don't let it dry a little bit. If I let it dry like this and I'm doing this, I can check the adhesive level and then put it on the surface and not worry about it ripping up um, paint or leaving residue behind. I think I'm gonna do this one first because I had it all figured out on here and it would show better. So these, my, my pattern here has these little dots. So I'm kind of using those little dots in the center of this to help me space a little bit. You may not be able to see it through the stencil, but I can. So let's see if I can get that laid down. All right, I got that laid down. And we're gonna switch our colors. And I can switch colors with by just simply cleaning off my brush like that and doing it. You never want to wash these brushes and then try to use them again while they're damp. Because what happens is then the moisture gets up into these bristles, it goes into the paint, and you get a very wet, puddly, smeary mess. And you have a lot of bleeding. For this one, I'm gonna use the old um, plaid brush. I'm gonna load it. These patterns are small, so my choices have nothing to do with who made the brush and everything to do with the size of the pattern. So I'm gonna take my silver, and I'm gonna just swirl it right on here. Oh yeah, this is gonna cover nicely. Let's get those corners, I can see a few spots. And I'm pulling back gently, because while this paint's cured, this paint isn't. And I know you can't likely, let me see if I can shift the light so you can catch a little bit there. Let me, let me see if I can, sorry for the fingers in the camera, I'm gonna see if I can zoom in a little bit. Sorry for my hand. Oh, there, I think you can see a little better now. There you go, there's the spot I'm working on. So this is gravel gray and this is metallic silver. So while they might read very close to the same on camera, it live, they're two completely different colors. And I'll probably throw in some other, you know, pewtery kind of color or something somewhere. And I'll put in white, so we're gonna have a lot of fun contrast going on in here. And I may just come back and see these dots that are here. I may just come back and paint them white. And then let's see. I'm gonna have to flip that because it's got some sort of little tabby thing right there. Um, probably. Okay. Let's put that there. And come back in. I have so much, you know, these this faux metal is so richly pigmented that I can do a lot with just a little tiny bit on my brush. I just scratch that up a little bit there. I can also remove it with the brush if I'm not careful. Oh my gosh, this is coming out so cute. If the camera shakes a little while I'm doing it, I apologize. The tripod's on the table, and my hand movements make everything vibrate a little bit. Oh, Barbara, that's so nice. You know, I appreciate when everybody says the nice things. I'm just here hoping, you know, I can do a little something to help you all pass this this very, very challenging times. Um, a little more pleasantly. Um, I know I sound like you know a TV announcer in these very challenging times, but the fact is, it is hard. Let's let's not let's not lie to each other about this and tell the truth. It's it's not fun to be 
you know, quarantined at home. It's not fun to worry about how your family's doing, worry about your own safety. So we're just gonna do stuff that makes that time at home um, a little easier for everyone. Just getting into these edges because my pattern didn't go all the way to the edge with the stencil. And I'm trying hard not to crunch it because I can just sort of fudge this into the corner really easily. And then later, if I need to, I can go touch it up. It's not a big deal. So I've got my pattern all the way there. I'm thinking that maybe this one would be fun here. I know I'm only going to get part of the pattern put in. I'm using the bottom of the stencil here to kind of line up my spacing. Let's see if I got this right. Let's see. And again, like I said, I'm kind of winging this. I'm not really sweating how perfect I get it. might have a little bleed on this one because I forgot to offload my brush. I was busy enjoying just painting. I haven't actually picked up a paintbrush in about five days since uh, Saturday or Sunday. When, when, when did I do my, you know, let's say, I gotta say probably maybe Saturday, whenever I did my last live, maybe Friday. Oh, that's cute. That's cute. And see, these little squares here line up with these little squares here. So line up. And that helps me lay this pattern in and make sure that it's not overlapping where it shouldn't be. Part of that I have to take responsibility for and do myself. Because if I don't line it up correctly, Nobody did it wrong but me. There we go. I think yeah, it's pretty good there. Like I said, if I screw it up a little, I don't care. It's gonna go out on my porch. I don't have like a, a sit out and you know veranda style front porch. I have um, a brick pathway and a little patio landing area at the top of our stairs that looking a little barren. So spring's coming, the tulips and all the other bulbs that we planted last fall are finally starting to peak out. It's too cold for them to bloom still. It's not even April here, you know, well, not even April, anybody, anywhere, unless you're in the next time zone for the next day, because tomorrow's April 1st. Yes, and no April Fool's Day this year. I think we've we've kind of lived through enough of a bad joke. And I'm just filling in these spaces. You know, I'm just sort of babbling. I honest to God, I have no idea what I'm talking about sometimes when I babble like this. Okay, and then I'm just gonna lean, line up my pattern a little bit like that. And this is a lot of what stenciling is more than anything is lining up your patterns so everything lays right, reads right. Um, the actual painting often doesn't take as much time as the working it out phase. And see, I, I screwed up over here a little bit. Oh my gosh, you're looking at stuff you, I can't even, you can't even see. I didn't realize, I'm so sorry. Folks, that's what happened. I zoomed out. I go zoom back in. Okay, sorry about that. I didn't. I had totally not was not even looking at my iPad, so I didn't realize you couldn't see my pattern. I apologize. Wow, that was sloppy of me. But I've doubled up my pattern over here because I didn't line it up correctly. I'm like, ah, crap, whatever. That's where the plant will grow. So again, I I could get really worked up about the fact that I didn't do it right but I'm not going to today. 
There's plenty of other stuff for me to get worked up about in this world, and I'm not gonna make that one one of it. So let me line it up so it's going up where it's supposed to. So I did fine until I got right here, and I have a bunch of little double overlaps and dots right in here. Oh well, I can either correct it later or I can ignore it. Knowing me, I'm likely to be ignoring it. Since this is going in my house, this isn't for a client. I don't have to correct it. I'm just going to hide the mistake with a plant <laughs> or somebody's butt in the chair. But this whole thing will be done and sealed up so that it is safe to be outside. Um, every product that I'm using is exterior rated, so it won't fail or fade because I use the wrong product. That's coming out so cute. I mean, a Fair Isle rocking chair. What a fun thing. I don't know what inspired me, where I got the idea, but I'm glad I did because I really like how it's coming out. So I've got the patterns now here, and I guess really what I need to do is get another pattern here and another pattern here. And I'm debating on whether I do the same pattern up top and then figure out something else. I think I may roll this pattern here so it almost looks like these patterns are all connected to each other and I'm just wrapping it in the same sweater, if that makes any sense at all. So I'm going to do gray, then silver, then silver, and I will find a home for the white in here somewhere. I haven't figured it out yet, but I will. Let's see if I got that on here. I need to pull it back a little bit this way, I think, looking at how I have it laid. Uh, I don't petals or anything in here from the other pattern. Now I'm going to do, when I do the seat, I'm probably going to lay the whole seat into a square rectangle, uh, seat square, and instead of doing stripes across it like that, I may w just wrap it in Fair Isle. I haven't decided yet. I'll probably decide there when I decide it when I get there. And really, I, if anybody is a solid believer in children needing um, to be exposed to a lot of black and white imagery before color, this is a great idea for that too. We're minimalists, no color people. I mean, look how fun this is. You have a fair, you can have something whimsically traditional in a non-traditional form. And I really did this one crooked, didn't I? Because that one, it's not even going to reach where the same place is that I did this one. This is what happens when I don't measure and I don't lay things out completely. This is all me. Because really, this pattern should have been angled down a little more and met here. So I kind of screwed up right there. I'm on a bad angle. Then again, my mistakes, your learning tools, go with it. So then we're going to take... That pattern can go, let's see. <laughs> Which pattern am I going to use there? So I've used this one twice. Let's use that one. I haven't used that one twice. So we're going to try something a little different on this one. Let's see if I can get it laid down. I didn't do my standard style. So line up on here where I usually check to see where all the edges. When I do something like this, not only do I trust my pattern, but I kind of also look at the edges under the pattern where things are lining up. If I'm seeing any dark here and any no dark there, I screwed up on that. My fault learn from it, don't do what I did. All right, let's get this pattern on 
here. how this is coming out definitely if you have questions or anything else Lori thank you um, does do you have a seed on it or are you gonna weave it actually has a sieve sorry for my hand I got to flip the camera up so you can see the seat uh, you can see my iPad against it but there is the seat it is fully seat full seat there so it's black and I haven't, like I said, I haven't decided exactly how I'm wrapping um, the design yet. Let's lay that on here and see if I can get any other pattern to fill in. A little bit, not a whole lot just a little tiny bit right over here. I am only doing the pattern on the front. You could certainly do it on both sides if you wanted to. I could flip this over and do it on the back of the leg, uh, the back of the, the slats on the back. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna line it up on this one because it's a full pattern. The one right there is not. And it's not helping me here. I put my brush in my mouth when I line up. These adhesive stencils are great. Sorry, I don't know if you can understand me. So the adhesive stencils are great in many ways, and they can be a pain in the ass in others, um, simply because they're a little stretchy. So getting everything to line up, now I can see that it's not perfectly lined up here, but I'm skipping a whole bunch of space here, so it'll work just fine. I need the illusion of perfection. I don't need actual perfection. There we go, that laid out perfectly. And then I still have to get this space up in here and I have to get these spaces here. So now I have to figure out which way I'm going. Uh, let's see. Why don't I take this pattern up here. And that'll just fill that in a little bit right there and there. Trying to be careful not to have my brush go over and I don't like how the big brush is working so I'm actually going to take my very small brush and come in here and do that. Get a little more paint on it because it didn't really have very much. And now that they're starting to... Actually, I shouldn't have done that one in silver. I should have done that one in gray. So I'll go back and I'll wipe that down with my finger because it's not like it'll hurt anything. Wipe off the silver. And if I need to offload paint, I just simply take it. I think you can all see my hand right here. I'm just going to take my brush, swirl it on my paper, and get as much of the silver out of it as I humanly can, just like I do with my other brushes and dip back into the silver, I mean, back into the gray, offload my brush a lot. And there we go. It's like, I started painting silver. I'm like, no, 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 you're supposed to be alternating the colors. That doesn't work right. Get back in with the gray. Get some more gray paint. I almost annoyed the tar out of myself doing that wrong too. And it's always this first spot, you know, the first time place you do anything, um, you can have all kinds of weird stuff happen. You're just still figuring stuff out. All right, so let me... Do I want to do this down here? I actually do want to do, except I'm not. I'm not sure that that pattern is going to give me a enough detail. So maybe 
What I actually want to do is switch this one upside down. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. And I always try to start as close to the center as possible, um, simply because when I move my patterns out this way, where they end and break on either side is, is identical. I don't have like a perfect pattern from here and then it breaks off funny here. If it's gonna break off on this side, it's gonna be a broken pattern on this side because I started from the middle and moved outward. Same way I do on the wall. Whoops, that's gonna be a little too high. There we go. And this is just gonna get a couple little dots here. Whatever, little tiny bit of spaces right there. Let's get the gray going again. And if I find my gray is too pale, I'll, I can put my stencils over this and do them again. Which that I might do if I don't think I got them dark enough. And like see, barely see anything there because there's barely any space there for it. But I can do that and lay that all right next to this. All right, that's all laid on there correctly. And I'm still using my small brush because now I'm in a tight spot and I don't want to have any bad bleeds or anything like that happen. I offload the brush too when I dip into paint just so it doesn't glob. I don't want any bad smears. Again, it's not as much of an issue with an adhesive stencil as it is with one of these Mylar stencils where the bristles can go underneath, but I'm still trying to pay attention. And see, I got a little doubled up problem there because why? Because these stretch and they can do Peculiar things. All right. Let's get in here. I really like how this is coming out. This is pretty thoroughly what I had envisioned, except I think I need to definitely pop some white into it because I need that little bit of high contrast in there to make it complete for me. So you can see I'm putting this really right on top of fresh paint. Why? Because A, I'm applying it so thin that it's virtually dry before I even have a chance to lift the stencil. And B, because I've applied it in a way that I can, uh, don't worry about it smearing. So here's our first completed one. Um, I need to pull up the other stencil and I can see that I think I missed some spot over here. Let me see if I'm right or wrong. I'll lay this on here a little bit. Oh yeah, I missed a whole bunch of stuff right over there. I'm gonna finish that up. And again, anybody asking how I come up with these designs and things, this stuff just pops into my head and then I have to find a way to um, interpret it with my hands. Because, and, and I'll be honest, like everybody else, sometimes what goes into one, my brain on one idea 
is not what comes out in the end. I am, you know, I either switch gears midstream or it, I didn't have it plotted out as the way I thought it was. Rarely is it a bad thing, it just is a, a thing. So now you can see more completely this shit. This kind of went like off. <laughs> and if I'm a little crooked, again, do I care? Nah. Because again, I'm, I'm, I might be a little off on some of these. It doesn't matter. It'll probably make, if I put it upright, it's probably definitely crooked. Probably. It's definitely crooked. I don't care. It's going to go <laughs> into my front porch with plants in it. So it doesn't matter that much. So let me flip it back here. Flip it up to me. Oh. Thank Beth. Thanks, Beth. Yes, it does kind of look like fabric, which is what the intention was. It's to look like a Fair Isle sweater. Um, I have. I grew up in a place where everybody had Fair Isle sweaters. I had orange and white. I was jealous of the girl who had the baby pink one. She had a gorgeous baby pink one, and that's all. It, she also had pink skin and dark hair, and she glowed when she wore it. So I don't know if I wanted to have the sweater, or I just wanted to be her. <laughs> Thank you very much for spending your time here with me. I appreciate it. Um, I'm just going to work on this for a little while more, and we're going to call it a day. Um, don't forget, uh, while we are closed to the public, we are still doing shipping, um, and we are doing no contact drop-off. And truly, our, our drop-off is no contact. I'm not handing it to you out the door. You're gonna let me know when you're coming to pick it up and just before you show up, I'm setting it outside the door and watching it until you pick it up. Um, we s disinfect everything before it leaves here, so we are doing our best to keep everybody safe and well and uh, keep me safe and well and keep my family safe and well. And hopefully, you know, enjoy, do some fun stuff. You have a lot of time right now. Um, times that if you're a non-essential employee, you may have time to do some creative stuff. Enjoy that time. Spend it with your family. Don't spend it with your family, whichever keeps them alive longer. And we love having you on here. So thank you for joining us today. Have a great one. Bye-bye.